So, you have a new Ant-Man movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Oh boy, we gotta make this good, because this is gonna be the kickoff for Phase 5. Yeah. So it's gotta live up to Phase 4, which a lot of people are saying was the most exciting phase yet. Well, well. So I figure we make this one take place in the Quantum Realm. That's where small things are. Very small things, sir, and we're gonna have a ton of excitement in this one. Sick! Oh yes, yeah, sir, tons of helmet removals. Don't you worry about that, there's gonna be a lot. What? Helmet removals, sirs. Characters are gonna take their helmets off dramatically a shocking number of times. Why? Because that's the coolest thing a person could do. Is it? Oh yeah, check this out, sir. Oh my god! Right? Do that again, do that again, do that again, do that again. Oh! All right, this is gonna be a good movie. Anyway, so Scott's daughter Cassie is older now, and she's built this machine that can send a signal down to the quantum realm. Right. But Janet is like, well, you can't be doing that. The quantum realm is dangerous. You can't get to stop doing that. Wasn't she messing around with quantum stuff with them at the end of the last movie? Hey, shut up, and so suddenly this machine goes nuts, and they all get sucked down in the quantum realm. Oh. Oh my god. Like they like they go into it. Oh, okay, so wait, what, what, what's, what's Janet afraid of down there? Ah, well see, she met this guy Kang down there and she helped him repair this ship of his. Okay. But when they have it all fixed up and she touches the ship, it gives her all these visions of Kang conquering and murdering people. Kind of a weird feature for a ship to have. So then she decided to mess up his ship's power core to make him stuck down there and she's afraid he could get out. Also, why were they even messing with that stuff? I mean, she must have told them about Kang down there. Oh, well, no, she kept that to herself. Oh, she did? Yeah, in fact, she doesn't tell them until much later in the movie, when they've been down there for a while. Why? So the movie can happen. Oh, okay, gotcha. So anyway, they get separated down there, and Scott and Cassie get captured by some quantum people that live down there. Uh-oh. And so they go up to Scott, like, are you a spy? And Cassie's like, no, he's not a spy, he's my dad. So they're like, oh, okay. How does that prove anything? Why couldn't they both be spies? Unclear. And so these folks are scared of Kang, because he's been conquering everything, so Cassie He's like, Dad, we gotta stay and help these people. And then they find their family first? Yeah, but she wants to help because that's her one character trait, and so she gives her dad some crap about that. These could be cannibals or something. They don't know anything about them. Yeah, anyway, then they get attacked, so these people are like, hey, you led them right to us. Didn't they capture them and bring them there? They did, yeah, and then Scott and Cassie are gonna get attacked by Modoc. Oh, Modoc, huh? What's his deal? Ah, well, turns out he's Darren Cross. Hey. Who is that? Darren Cross. He was, you know, the generic bad guy from the first movie. He's from the first movie! Yeah, he is. So when he got sent down to the quantum realm at the end of the first movie, he got all messed up, and we're gonna see his tiny little butt. What? And Kang turned him into this killing machine called Modok. And what's he like? Well, his head's all stretched out weird like this. Oh, my God, how did he do that? I've been doing Pilates. Oh, okay. So anyway, meanwhile, Janet, Hope, and Hank are trying to track down this guy that Janet used to know down in the quantum realm. Who's this guy? Well, his name is Cry and we're gonna find out they had a little romantic thing going when she used to live down there. Oh, quantum infidelity is tight. And so this guy used to be a good guy, but now he's a bad guy. Oh no. Yeah, so they steal his ship and escape. Very exciting. And so then Scott is gonna meet Kang, and Kang is gonna be like, hey, help me retrieve my ship's core or I'll kill your daughter and make you relive it over and over. Oh my god. So Scott's like, geez, okay, I'll do it. He doesn't like how that sounds. He doesn't know. So then he is gonna do what Kang asked. Uh-oh. And so then Scott's gonna turn into Giant Man and stomp around yelling, our word is our bond! Kind of a strange strategy, but yeah, that might help. And Cassie's also gonna help start an uprising with those quantum people from earlier in the movie. Alright, I don't feel like I know those characters and I'm not super emotionally invested. And this guy with a yellow beam thing for a head is gonna die! Oh no! Guy with a yellow beam thing for a head! And Cassie's also gonna have to fight MODOK and try to convince him to join their side. Oh, it's gonna be hard to convince such a bad guy to help out. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, she's gonna be like, don't be a dick. And so, you know, that works immediately. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. And then Hank shows up with some super evolved ants and they beat the crap out of Kang. Very violent insects. So then the good guys are gonna be going home through a portal, but then Kang's gonna pop out again and start beating the crap out of Scott. Oh no. Yeah, and Hope's gonna pop back in to help out and the portal's gonna close behind her. Oh. Yeah, Hope! I forgot she was in this. Me too, sir. So then they managed to defeat Kang, and maybe he's dead, you know, maybe. Wow, so they're stuck in the quantum realm, huh? They sacrifice themselves? Ah, no, the portal can just reopen, so they go home. Oh! 
Okay, I just, I thought there would be some consequences or something. I mean, it has consequences, sir. The guy with the yellow beam thing for a head died. That is a good point, yeah, you're right. And so that's about it, what do you think? Well, I mean, Kang is supposed to be the next big bad guy, right? And so far we've seen him get killed in Loki, and in this one he gets beat up by a bunch of bugs. Yeah, well, there is gonna be a post credit scene of a bunch of him in a bunch of different costumes. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. That is threatening and not hilarious in any way. Great, I think people are really gonna like this. Me too. Hi everybody, Ryan George here. Thank you for watching that pitch meeting. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to subscribe, that's the thing you could do. You could also just hang out here, look at a picture of me and my, my new dog. His name's Louie. He, look, look at him. That's him right there on the right side of the picture. Lower right side. He's on the lower right side of the picture. And also, goodbye.